And you try to think of all sorts of metaphors and adjectives to describe it, you know, a steely look. Um, and steely's good because it's just unmoving, you know, cold, just kind of this um, penetrating look. There's just nothing, no emotion, just looking at me. Not in a curious way, it was more of turn around. Just turn around, pal. I almost got you. And that was that was the unsettling part. It was this the reality of this of this beautiful animal, the quietness and the subtleness and his in his sudden appearance. Um, for me that's Satan. Uh, I was hunting uh, a weekend ago in Crown Rook. I had been up there a couple of weeks hunting elk, myself and uh, a neighbor. And pretty much not too much happening for the for the couple weeks we were there. Saturday morning we decided to go out for a hunt because we were planning to come back home Saturday afternoon. We decided to go down to a big island in the Kootenai River that had been mentioned through the couple weeks that we were there that should be a good place for elk. And somebody had mentioned that you know, there, there had been a cougar sighting down there, as well as some bears, but uh, hadn't heard anything of recent. So off we went, finally, this, this bright and early morning. We got down there not too long after sunrise. And I got a little Honda trail bike. And so I took my hunting partner, Dave, and took him across the river, because it's pretty shallow, and a bunch of kokanee in the, in the river, which is pretty cool. So we drove across the the shallows and there's a quad trail on the island so I drove him down there a little bit and I suggested he walk on the quad trail. It opened up quite a bit down the way and I was going to go more or less up the island because I saw this cow path and slight quad trail. Decided to follow that. <clears throat> so I'm riding along in the Honda and I'm following, the cow trail kind of follows the edge of the island and the river bank and the mainland and a couple of small islands. And every now and then I would stop and binoc- take the binoculars out and scan the river bank to see if there's any tracks, any new sign. A uh, small tree stand that I climbed and checked around and you know I kept on going. Finally I came to this one little spot, a bit of an opening about the size of the stage at uh, Willow, Willow South. You know trees kind of like what you see here and more more dense bushes around. And I had left the, the bike idling and I looked around There's didn't see any elk or anything else. Walked over to the river bank, it was probably about 15 feet away, and you know, I'm again, I'm looking at the river bank and looking across the other side, and I don't see any new sign. Just looking around and scoping things out. Probably there a good five minutes. You know, I've got my rifle, so I turn around and start walking back towards the the bike, and something just just caught my eye, slight movement, and I looked up, and just on the other side of the bike, probably about, no, I'm saying probably about eight meters away was this mountain lion in a full stride just stopped almost like a National Geographic pose looking at me and, and I was just I was just startled more than anything it was uh, I wasn't afraid I ate fear for breakfast <laughs> but no it's um it, it just startled me because suddenly it was there it wasn't there before there was no sound it was just there I remember being struck as this beautiful looking animal but uh just so so stealthy just that suddenly there and looking at me and, and wow you know so I just I took a bead at it and I thought well no you know what do you do and you see a big mountain light well you make a lot of noise and make yourself big and so I did and I shoot it off and, and it loped off into the bushes and, and I thought well that was stupid because he just went into the bushes where I have to go out and I thought what did I accomplish there so I picked up a big stick and I threw it in the bushes and nothing came out or didn't hear any more sounds and I waited a few minutes and so well I'll, I'll carry on I'm here looking for elk not not mountain lions jumped on the bike and gave a last glance around and continued on probably for another oh maybe 15 20 yards and it still followed along the edge of the island but started to get a little denser and there's this little turn almost like a 90 degree turn into the woods that I thought well I'll go in there and just to see and pulled into that and it's just again there's this little tiny opening about the size of the stage but this time it's far more dense and it was all closed off in front of me with a bunch of thick bushes and there's a big tree that had fallen over 
to my right and I was looking at the tree thinking, well, I could clamber up the tree and probably a good vantage point just to look around. And, you know, I've got the bike idling away and I'm just looking at it. And, and I just kind of got off the bike and turned around and looked. And right where I had turned to come in was the mountain lion. And he was sitting there, just this picture-perfect pose, just looking at me. Um, that rattled me. It, it, it wasn't a fearful response so much as it's, whoa, you know. It's, and I whipped off the gun, my hat's flying, and, you know, and I, I took a bead at him. And I thought, wow, you know, I don't have a license to shoot mountain lion. Do I really want to shoot him? Well, no, he's not doing anything. He's looking at me. Well, he's threatening. Well, you know, second time I've seen him, uh, I think he means business. He's not just out for a social visit. Um, and, and just all these weird thoughts. I think being startled, being, you know, just, uh, again, this stealthy animal suddenly there and just, uh, just looking at me, not even budging or twitching a muscle when I move. Just, just continue to sit there. So I fired at his feet. He jumped off and took off. And, and again, I was struck by, well, that was stupid, again. Um, I haven't eliminated the threat or the problem. I've just shoot it away. <laughs> I haven't dealt with anything. And so I, I texted my wife, Carrie, and said, you know, I just shot at a cougar, and she freaked out, saying, get out of there. You know? And then I texted my, you know, it's the great thing about hunting and iPhones, right? You can start texting people while you're bored. Uh, if ever there was a graphic image for me of, of Satan going around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, that was it. Because he was so stealthy, so um, so in control, so composed. There was no fear, there was no threat in that in that mountain lion at all. He was just it's like he was just looking for that opportune moment when he had enough time to take me down. And it's one thing to see it on National Geographic or in the nice pictures or on or your Mac, you know, latest uh, operating system. This wasn't a cute kitty or, or some kind of a thing that separates you on a screen. Uh, this was a real animal that was looking at me and had ulterior motives. And the constant things that are around us, the constant temptations, everything from the way we live to the houses we have and what we want to do and the things we want to have, the toys, uh, the jobs, the, the approval from others. Um, all those things are all those for me, I, now I've got this graphic image of this mountain lion just staring me down, trying to win this little tiny battle. And, and with an assurance that it was going to win. It's just time. That was freaky. Um, again, there wasn't a fear. You know, when I was wrestling with it, it wasn't a fear thing so much as it was just being taken off guard, uh, shaken by by its sudden appearance, suddenly there. That to me, again, was another image of Satan. Constantly there, constantly behind your back. You turn around, oh, it's that. And so subtle. You know, I, I just wanted to shoo him off. Uh, it's kind of like Satan, oh, okay, go away. You know, be gone, Satan. You know, we capitalize on some scriptures and, and all, off we go and carry on our day and don't give it much more of a thought instead of really being in prayer throughout the day and taking God seriously as, as a real God who is there and is not silent. Um, this cat was silent. Satan can be really silent in my experience.